Welcome to a special edition of All About Money on HKIBC. I'm Chloe Fong. Taekwondo is a form of martial art which began in South Korea after the Second World War. Practitioners don a white uniform called Dobok. And while I may look the part, I must confess that I'm a complete newbie. But that's also okay because we are meeting a Taekwondo master in Hong Kong. He runs a Taekwondo studio and like many other businesses, his income took a big hit during the challenging COVID time. But with the restrictions dropped, will his business see a significant rebound? We'll talk more about the current recovery status. So hi, Master No. Thank you for taking the interview and welcome to our program. 안녕하세요. Nice 안녕하세요. After doing some research, I know that Taekwondo is from South Korea, but for many people who are not very familiar with this martial art, they may really not know that much about this, this form of a sports or martial art. So can you first tell us what is Taekwondo? I know there are special meanings behind it, isn't it? Yeah, there's uh, three letters in Korea, Te. Guan Do. So Te means is a punch and the hand techniques, and then Guan means like kicking and then foot techniques. The last Do is way of human and learning about respect, manner, and the confidence, and the cooperation. So learning about the life. Mm, there's also some philosophy behind it, right? That's right. And uh, uh, I, speaking of the primary customers. I know many children may be very interested in learning about this martial art, but other than um, children, would, would there be also, for example, adults who are interested in learning this as well? Yeah, at the first, the most of customer is uh, children, mm -hmm. and then about less than 10% is the adult students. So we have morning class for the ladies, for like mommies, mm -hmm. and also we have a, a night, class, night class for the adult after work. But uh, still, not too many uh, adults interested in Taekwondo because I think they think Taekwondo is only for the children's sport. So they just uh, go like Muay Thai or kickboxing or boxing. Mm -hmm. But currently, we uh, study a lot and then research about the adult program. So if once they come to our class and they enjoy and then they continue our lessons. I know that you also learned you know, you're a master now, but how long did it take for you to become a master uh, like in Taekwondo? So far, I've, I've trained like 26 years. 26? Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty long time. And usually, we, we are also seeing there are like different levels for Taekwondo as mm -hmm. well. Basically, there are 10 levels from the white, white belt, belt to the black, black belt. belt. Yeah. How long do you think it might take for one to gradually progress from, you know, a newbie to the gradual uh, master with black belt? Uh, in black belt, actually, there's a, a different level to like level one black belt, level two, level three. So from level four, you can be a master. Mm -hmm. So from white belt to level one black belt, it takes normally three to four years. Three to four years. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, but it also requires long time training and concentration in this as well. Uh, how many students uh, do you have for now? Now we have uh, more than 1,000 students. So around 1,010, uh, 10, 1,100 students we have. All right. That's quite a lot of students. And uh, also, how many masters do you have in your school? So include to... me, mm. and then uh, we have seven masters. Seven masters to teach over 1,000 students. Yes, right. Wow. And uh, if we go back to the time when um, there was the challenges emerged from the COVID mm -hmm. three years ago, mm -hmm. I mean, how have how has COVID also affected your business That's during true. the very challenging time? Yeah, it was very challenging and it was a nightmare for our industry because it is about three years for COVID time, right? And then in our industry, uh, we call uh, under fitness center, we shut down about 10 months during the three years. So it's a quite long period. We cannot open and we cannot do any business. So we keep losing the money at that time. Mm, but last year, could be the worst timing, isn't it? Like when we have the fifth COVID wave, would you say that that's the most challenging period over the past three years? That's right, because uh, we shut down four months continually. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a huge uh, uh, damage. But for mentally, I, I was okay because I already uh, practice about shutdown. So I can uh, be manage my mental. But for business, yeah, it was a big damage. 
how, what do you mean by you can manage your mental status? So because first time they shut down six weeks, uh, it was very shock for us because we cannot do anything for the business. Mm -hmm. So second wave, also about seven weeks, it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. But third uh, shutdown was about eight weeks. I'm starting learning, okay, uh, we cannot change anything because there's a huge nature uh, problem mm -hmm. in the world history. Mm -hmm. So I start to accept this problem and I was uh, try to come and then try to think about the solution and more focus on to how to overcome this problem. Mm, to also adapt to the new situation as well. That's right. And I know that it, you know you provided many classes for, for children, but for Taekwondo, it requires you know physical presence, isn't it? So uh, how did you manage to overcome this issue of continuing your lessons you know, uh, during the COVID time? Yeah, in the did big... You, did yeah. you adapt to, for example, online classes? That's right. In the beginning, we made uh, some uh, home training video for the students mm -hmm. because we didn't expect it's going to be a long journey. So we just made the for some home training video and send the students to continue their training at home. But it, it takes longer, so we decided to start an online class with the Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not really helpful mm -hmm. because less uh, children cannot focus and concentrate because we need to teach them how to correct move. Yeah, it was not easy. So at the time, we also learning like outdoor class, mm -hmm. but government said uh, you cannot gather more than four people. Mm -hmm. So one master can teach only three students. So we go that way. But in the lot after that, uh, now they change two students. Only two people can gather and more than two people cannot gather oh. outside. So we can do only private lessons one by one. Mm -hmm. So we, anyway, we keep did this one to continue their training. Mm -hmm. Also, we also do some home visiting. Mm -hmm. So we visit their home and they teach at home as well. That's very innovative, but our children, uh, many children adopt this way of uh, you know, having the private lessons at their home. Mm -hmm. uh, what about that situation? Uh, yeah, some. Not that many, but they still some want to continue their training. Mm -hmm. So we are very happy about that because they have passion to continue. Mm -hmm. So even very far, like Yunlong or far away from the, our school, we take the bus and then we go visit and teach them. Definitely a challenging time. And speaking of, you know, one way you can try to innovative, uh, add more channels for your lessons. But another issue would be, you know, how to lower the cost to the operating cost as well. And the rental must be a very big concern during that time. Did you ever uh, receive any subsidies from the government? And there were the rental concessions uh, initiative from the government. Did you get any help from that? Yeah. Government gave us some um, subsidy about three times during the 10 months. So they didn't give us like every month when we shut down. They just gave a instant subsidy. Yeah, it was of course thankful to get the subsidy, but uh, the subsidy was lower than our land. Mm. So, and they just give three times and then it's still very uh, not enough mm -hmm. at the time. And then the one thing I can understand is uh, they give subsidy, just the same amount, whatever you have size and whatever your rent is. So like our schools, uh, subsidy is lower than our rent. But some school is very small and their subsidies are bigger than rent. So yeah, it was very challenging for us too. But I think the fitness center was very challenging at the time because they need to rent a huge amount mm -hmm. and they need to pay Good rent. Space. Yes, so many fitness centers closed at the time. Mm, right, so maybe we could also reflect to have more targeted, specific measures to adapt to the rental concession as well. Yeah. I, as I know, they give the uh, subsidy mm. by size for the restaurants, mm. but they didn't give us their policy to us. Mm. They just give some same amount to every schools mm. and that's definitely the very challenging time during the past three years but after the borders are open and COVID restrictions are dropped and we don't have any social distancing measures now uh, we don't need to wear masks uh, did you see a change in your uh, business as well yeah that's right after last year finished shutdown about april many students registered because parents 
In the first year, they very scared, and the second year, still scared to send them. The third year, I think they are a little bit tired with the measurement, and because every country is changing to the least uh, measurement. Mm -hmm. So they and also they always stay at home as they are getting fat and lazy. Mm -hmm. So many parents want to send them to some to exercise. So we got the many amount of students at that moment, yeah. but at the same time, uh, we also lose many students because. Mm -hmm. Lose students. Yeah, because they want to stop, because still worry about COVID, or some they stop because of losing interest in, because they didn't continue the training. Oh. And then the last one is many of students immigrate to other countries like UK, Australia, Canada. They go back to their countries. You do see a change about you know the immigration issue yes. as well. All right. Okay. And uh, but after. Well, there, there must be some uh, increasing numbers in terms of enrollments, isn't it? Yes, right. All right, thank you very much for sharing, Master No, We'll take a short break for now, but coming up next, we'll have more discussions over the city's tutoring business, so do stay tuned. Welcome back to All About Money on HK IBC. I'm Chloe Fong. Still with us today is Master No, who is running a Taekwondo studio in Hong Kong. And we're talking about the city's tutoring business recovery. So thank you for taking the interview with us, Master No. Thank you. And, uh, 감사합니다. 감사합니다. <laughs> Previously, we talked about your business during the COVID time. And now I also bring out about a very interesting part that you have also provided classes for students with ADHD, or the Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. So it is usually first diagnosed in ch um, childhood and, and often lasts into adulthood as well. And children with ADHD may have you know, trouble paying attention, controlling impulsive behaviors. But why do you think you know, Taekwondo could be beneficial for uh, students with, with ADHD? Okay, and the first, uh, we don't have special class for the ADHD, but we just know because uh, some parents let us know their child has a problem with the ADHD. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, for the, in Taekwondo, there's uh, some spirit like never give up. So we are trying to uh, not give up for the uh, children. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, talking about masters. So some children come and then cannot focus and they cannot follow and then run away. Uh, it's not easy actually, but we always not give up our students mm -hmm. unless they give up, unless parents give up. We always try to our best to they continue to training. Mm -hmm. So how how to we can improve their uh, ADHD? Uh, we have some several ways. Uh, the first, uh, we let them do eye focus first. Mm -hmm. So we let, we teach them to look first. Yeah, look. That's the we call eye focus. And the second, uh, the posture. We try to teach them posture, how to sit, how to stand. So otherwise, they are keep moving and they don't look mm -hmm. and they cannot have a lesson. Mm -hmm. That's the common things from the ADHD students. Mm -hmm. So like posture is very important to make the uh, difference. Like you, you always like uh, stand and sit nicely. And then your voice also very clear. So make us feel trustable, right? Mm -hmm. But if you see like this in the your show and then you say like a little bit lazy Loosening, talking, yeah. yeah, it doesn't feel right, right? Mm. So when you make the good posture and then make the good sounds and then the volume up, uh, it can help for really uh, their movement mm. and then their concentration. So some people say like, after you wake up, open your chest and say, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, then you can make feel more confident, right? So in the Taekwondo, there's a belt system. Mm -hmm. So every belt has a belt test. So after they train hard and then they mm -hmm. do their best and then reach the sun belt, they feel something different and then real achievement mm -hmm. and the confidence. And then they start to think and they start to change mm -hmm. their concentration and then their uh, behavior. That's, that's very interesting, also very inspiring as well. How many students uh, have you taught for students with ADHD? 
Uh, well, I, I don't know. Some student is ADHD, but we didn't know. But some student is ADHD, we know because parents should let us know. So some students is already black bird and they are still training. All right, I think it also fits into the Taekwondo spirit as well, like to be very uh, encouraging and be confident about yourself that you can make something to happen, yes. isn't it? All right, and uh, also I know that you have some initiative that is also very meaningful as well. For example, if you teach 10 students mm -hmm. and then you will sponsor one student from other countries, can you talk more about this initiative? Uh, actually, yeah. Before I establish our company, I visit uh, some NGO first, mm -hmm. their office, and I tell them to my vision. So I'm going to open my business, and then when I have students, I'm going to donate uh, children uh, every month. So after tell them, I start business, and the ho uh, luckily I my business was good. So I start to be, uh, donate children every month. Yeah, that's a goal you already set up before you're setting up your own school, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and you came to Hong Kong to set up your school. Yeah. Also tell us why did you choose to come to this city instead of other cities, right? You mentioned about you also being to other countries or regions. What made you to come to this city to settle down? And the first, uh, when I was primary school, I already have a proper vision and dream. I want to be a like global master in the other countries. So I already had a, that mind from the primary school students. So I always continue to reach this goal. So I start to go outside for the like join the competition and then do some performance to other countries. And also I went to Ukraine for teach Taekwondo about three to four months. Mm -hmm. And I went to Indonesia two years for teaching mm -hmm. and also Philippines one year and teaching. And then I went to Hong Kong to teach. I was uh, starting thinking one year first, but when I came to here, uh, I can feel many Hong Kong parents like care about their children's development and also do lots of effort for the children's growing up. So I think uh, it would be good to uh, sp spread uh, Taekwondo spirit in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Also, the one thing interesting is there's uh, many other country people living or staying in Hong Kong, right? So that was one of my goal, and uh, want to spread to Taekwondo lots of countries. So that was one of part. So also have a cross-cultural uh, mission as well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and also uh, because you you've been in Hong Kong for these many years, you said that Hong Kong parents uh, care about their children's growth and development, but how would you rate the current tutoring market status, for example, for your industries? Are there many competitors in this industry like who are also offering the Taekwondo uh, classes? I think so far, not bad in our, uh, of course, many Taekwondo schools all starting open uh, listen to like three years but I think still have a market to uh, many places but compare with your country mm -hmm. South Korea yeah. would, what would you say is the most distinctive like difference if, in the Taekwondo if classes if I say just Taekwondo uh, in Korea is very very competitive because like Across the road, there's a Taekwondo school, and the same building, there's a Taekwondo schools, but now not, not that much so far. Yeah. Is it like everyone, almost everyone, would uh, you know, have the exposure to Taekwondo as well in South Korea? Yes, mostly. All right. So maybe you would see a bigger potential in developing your career here. Yes, right. What would be the messages you want to spread to your students as well? Mm -hmm. What would be the messages you want to share with them? So what I want to share is I always to do this in the bear test, bear test time. So when feel difficult, they want to give up because they didn't have a much experience. If we keep encouraging them and then if they overcome that part, they can grow up and then they have some experience. When they face the difficult, they do not give up. They can go move on like life. Like me, my business, the COVID is calm. It was very challenging. But if I feel this uh, I give up, I want to give up, then I couldn't stay up to here. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn how to not give up when difficult come in your life. Then you can overcome this one. Mm -hmm. 
that you can grow up and you can move on. So they have what experience to overcome the difficult with a better test. They cried, they practiced hard, and master pushed a lot. But eventually they make it, they can do something. So I want to say, do not give up for everything, and then be confident with this experience. What is a famous saying? Fighting! Yeah, <laughs> Isn't fighting, it? <laughs> right. All right, so after speaking a lot about this martial art, I'm thinking, can we also have a bit of experience of this martial art as well? Sure, why not? <laughs> and now let's you know, learn more about the Taekwondo in real actions. Sure. Just try to teach your traditional style of Taekwondo punch, mm. and then we are going to try to break the wooden board Whoa. today. So, can you follow me? Mm. Follow me stance like this one? Yeah. Just a little bit open. Okay, and then, okay, change your leg here. Okay, and the hands are here. The one hand is straight here, and the other hand is start uh, putting in the, your waist. And then we do try slowly. Uh, two hands move together, and then start to spin, and hit it. Okay. Yes, and then we try a little bit faster. Mm. Sure. Okay, now. Wow, oh. I can hear his um, like sound, it's different. Let me try. The legs first. Did you hear my neck? Yes. <laughs> my <From laughs> shoulders. Here. Okay, ready, go. Oh, yeah, much Is better. It better? Okay. And then when you punch with the shouting, it's better. Mm. Ha! With the sounds, it makes stronger you. Mm. Go. Ha! Very good, okay. <laughs> So yeah, I feel very energetic now. <laughs> break this one. Oh my gosh, this is like, uh, what does this mean actually? I don't, is it for the belt testing? Yes, we have belt tests and then every belt has a different skills of mm. the breaking. So beginner, uh, just punch. And then getting higher, more difficult kicks. Mm. Just punch here and then do not stop here. You need to go all the way up to here. Okay, okay. is it connect? <laughs> All right. And then one. don't forget, ha! With the shouting, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> you can Wait, do another it. One, another one, another one, another one. One, mm. two, three. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. <laughs> three pieces. Oh my God. It actually hurt a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So I know that your wife is also a master. Uh, in your school as well. So who is m more higher ranked? Of course, I am higher than her. <laughs> I, I, uh, if you have a competition with your wife, uh -huh. who do you think will win? Uh, still, I can win in technique, but I need to lose as a husband. <laughs> I assume this also can bring some very good physical benefits, mm -hmm. isn't it? I, I, for example, I usually have neck and you know, shoulder pain. Uh -huh. Do you think this could also be one of the ways for uh, for 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 adults to do stretching? In the taekwondo, good thing is there's always balance. Mm. Like example, there's a pattern. Mm. You do do this thing here, and you must be same thing other side. So we don't uh, just focus on one part, like baseball. Mm. One part and golf was only one part. So it's not good for your uh, body balance mm -hmm. for long term. Can you also show us very some of the very advanced uh, Taekwondo mm -hmm. tricks? All or right. like what is the most difficult, uh, let's say, steps you've ever performed? Okay, we can show some uh, difficult kick. Uh, there's uh, another master here. Master So? Yes, sir. <laughs> So here we show us uh, some difficult kick. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much again, Master No, for sharing with your insights. And uh, we'll be back next Sunday night at 8.30 p.m. on HKIBC. So until the next time, see you then. And I will continue my learning with Master No about the Taekwondo. So let's keep trying. Let's try. <laughs>